So, you've made it this far. Fantastic. I've done my measurements again and again and again. A couple, well, two or three times really. Now, I am going to change the shims of what I want to change. So I'll just do one just to show you. But keep it in mind, you can actually change shims from different. So you've got a 2.8 in there, 2.80 in that one, say. Um, but you need a 2.9 in there. And you need a 2.4, uh, 2.9 in there, but you've got 2.8 in there. Just swap them around. As long as they both uh, measure the correct measurement, you sound. So, anyway, I am going on dirtcloud.com forward slash valve shim forward slash, which brings you up to this. And what you can do here is type in all your tolerances. So I'm going to go on the exhaust. So let's see. So what you need to do is the clearance and then get in your magnet. Where did I put her? Uh, clean magnet and this one. <coughs> Take your cup out and inside, oh it's falling off, inside you should have a shim on the middle where that shiny bit is. You've got a shim there. So, keep your bucket to, one, to a safe place so you don't uh, lose it or misplace it. Only do one at a time, mind you. Can you still see? Yeah. Bring you in a bit closer. So only do one at a time, so I'm on this one here. You're only doing one at a time. And what I'm going to do here is measure this. 2.87. About 2.9. What's it say on you? 2.9, yeah. So we've got. So you type that in on the shim. No spec, that is rather. So you type your specs in first. So for the exhaust, it's 2. Point, uh, 0 0.22 to 0 0.31. Current clearance. That's look at two out. Old shim is two point nine. Calculate. It's telling me I need a two point two point seven in the exact one. So I need two point two point six two point seven in. I've got the right one there. So I need a well, oh, it needs to be more of a clearance, don't I? I need that's too tight, you see. So what I need is 2.6 well then. See what we got. I should have some of them. Bring it to the lower end, which is what I want. So that's two point. This one is a two point five eight, and on on it it says two point six five. What? Two point six five. Yeah. See, there you are. Two point six four. It says two point five eight six five on. So I'm going to put that one in there. And put the bucket back on, and I'm sorted. Now, same again for this one. And this is the only one, the other one that's out of tolerance. I've done the rest, but this is another one that's just out of tolerance. It's too tight. Right now, it's time to put the cams back in. Remember, I had a four at top dead center, so these got to be facing outwards. 
So take me chain guide thing off. Making sure I'm on at the bottom, yep. Yeah. Do have marks on the inside of the the cams as well, so you want to get them there or thereabouts. Now in the back, I do remember, if I do recall correctly, getting them both in was a bit of a pain. looking for, I normally put my finger down there just to get that tight, see that one's slightly out, it's about too, too tight, so go that way, put my finger where the cam chain tensioning goes and that, it should line it up a bit better. <laughs> Right, so all the marks line up for now. That's the way up. Make sure that spring stays there. Don't want that popping out. Chuck that in. Two eight mils in first. Wise them in. Pinch them up. Pinch them spanner. tension inside, just remember you still got that spring and the space of thingy, my bobby. That's gonna go in. All the way in. It goes round it and then you might hear some clicks. There you are, it's clicking out to the the chain now. Only about three clicks there, so I'm about eight clicks out. <coughs> Squeeze that up. Sealed, we're in. Right then, what you can do now is start turning the engine clockwise. Make sure that's timed up down there and these marks are lined up. <coughs> you it clicking a bit more now. Every now and then you click just to get the tension. So it's got no tension there now. I'm keeping this guide off for now, just so I can see. So I'm going round a couple of times here. That lines up, that lines up, that lines up. Decent tension in the chain. I think we're golden there. We can put the one seat back on and I can talk everything up now for is on TDC so I can check them. I'm gonna go around, check them. You've seen me check them, and I'll be back in a second. Right out, time to talk talk everything up because I want everything to be in the right tolerances, so Ten mil, oh. twelve newton meter.
Right then. So I've got the timing and the clearances sorted, all talked in, stuff like that. I've had to do it a couple of times because some were touching the tolerance I wasn't too, too happy with. So now what I'm going to do is change the ignition advancer. The ignition, what's it called? It is called the timing rotor. So if I get my ignition advancer out, the new one, everyone will be happy when I find it. There we go. Done. Got it. <coughs> A lot easier if you do this in the bike I've got to be honest so I have uh, undone it with my trusty gun and what you're looking for here is removal of this and you're looking at this here see this there's a little I'll show you on this new one on this new one there's a little We'll get you there. There, see that a tooth missing there, and that is here. So you're looking to put that in the same place. So wiggle it off. He says. There we go. See so that. That's what that must be for then. A little shim. Put the shim on first, and then put her on there where it's meant to go. Oops, stuck to the magnet. Where are you? Come on then. I had you then. There. Put the pin back in. Oh, I had it. I'm not going to wise that up with the. Don't worry. The torque setting for this is. Is. It's only got to be about 25 newton meter a bit. Torque settings. I've got quite a couple of bolt. Timing rotor bolt. 25 newton meter for the ZX7. So 39 newton meter. This is. Now I can put the. Come on, it's what's happening here? Something's happening, I'm not chuffed about. Maybe I'll read a sec, get my box. I just need tighten the road. Tighten that up. Then I can there we go, Martin now. Right, there we go. And that other than talk talking it up which I'll do later on in the bike is how you change that so that's the old one that's the new one
that because of the fuel we have over here in Britain means it will run a lot better so hopefully that does make it run a lot better we'll find out won't we